Welcome to the Psychedelic Archives. And today we got Sammy Sheba, who's my co-host slash host slash co-host of the Curious Chips podcast. We're in a 50-50, so we're not co-hosts. We're just hosts. Co slash host. And yeah, <laughs> it's been a while since I did one of these. I want to start doing them more regularly again. And this is a good catalyst to starting by bringing you on and igniting that flame. Who, who's your last guy? Uh, my buddy, um, Connor. Connor. Talked about a mushroom trip he had. Mm -hmm. For all those listening, if this is new, welcome. And what this is, is basically it's going to be a collection of people's psychedelic stories. Um, eventually, I would like to uh, love to comp to put it into a book and have it like a coffee table style book. But I think the organic way to go about it is to get it as like a storytelling show on YouTube and then all the podcast streaming services and then build it from there. Because what I found from the psychedelic experience is that it's so intimate and so profound at times. And sometimes it's just ridiculous. And I want to kind of give the audience a view of these these realms and worlds in a different different manner than just reading trip reports but hearing people's stories whether it changed their life or it was just a really fun wild experience i want to kind of encompass all those kind of stories into into this podcast but whether it's profound or not i just think it's it's cool to have a sharing because some of my favorite moments in ayahuasca uh ceremonies and stuff is the sharing part afterwards mm -hmm. hearing people's experiences and what they went through so that's the value. There's a lot of value in the experience, but I think there's a lot of value in sharing. I think it's part of the integration is just just saying it out loud, mm. hearing other people's perspectives, and especially that they all just went through the same thing. When when I was there, it's like people were almost afraid to talk, mm. and then everyone else wanted to follow in suit. You know, like oh, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on everybody. You know, like just are you cool? Are you okay? You need some help? Or like, are, are you thankful? Like it, yeah. it seemed a bit flaccid. Whereas it could have been hours and hours of people like, I, I saw this and I went through this and I saw this family member. And it's like, yeah, maybe we just don't have that energy sometimes, you know, but it's it's n it's beautiful and it's necessary. Well, I understand like the container of a ceremony. <laughs> if we had everyone speaking for hours, <laughs> like at that point, it's like you want to go home and start integrating. And maybe yeah. it's not the right environment to hear everyone's story and get influenced by each other's experiences when you might have a shit ton of stuff on your plate that you have to integrate. That's a good point. Yeah. It might hurt more than it helps sometimes. But I think it, there is still huge value in the sharing part of it. Whether it's right after, it, it's still valuable in terms of right after because it's so open. But like stories like this, for me, it was what got me into this world was hearing people's stories mm. before I even ventured into the psychedelic world. It was just hearing trip reports, reading about trip reports. You know, I was just <laughs> mind blown by that idea that there's another world out there. Yeah, or other worlds. Yeah, full full on other experiences. You know, like a like a video game. You know, yeah. taking the mushroom like a Super Mario. But you're not like powerful. You're, man. You know, like it's, it's the things you see in in fantasy worlds. You know, like to be transported. Yeah, there's nothing else in the world that can really do that other than psychedelics. That's why I or find a so plane, wild. I guess. <laughs> That's but why they say taking a trip, right? <laughs> I find it so wild that that those levels of consciousness can be achieved and experienced. And it's just like how it's not spoken about more publicly is my, it is getting there now. But like, if you really thought about it, like, wouldn't this be like the number one news story all day, every day, like a yeah. DMT trip? <laughs> it's uh, like a man took a plant today and dreamed while he was awake, you know, like, <laughs> or be like, just and like, now he loves everyone. <laughs> like breaking news. I just did DMT and I spoke to an alien and said, we're all one. What the fuck? <laughs> and like, why are we all collectively freaking out about this concept more? It's like people talk about going to Italy or Europe and how amazing the experience is. But like there is literally you smoke DMT and then your whole world that you know is completely obliterated and you're in this fragmented geometrical um, spaceship <laughs> yeah. into the abyss. And we're just like, yeah. or just naked and in, in yeah. like the ether sometimes, you know, but that, <laughs> that feeling is, there. but that's a good analogy. That's a good one for one comparison because like I've, I've gone on a long, beautiful trip and no one cared when I came back. <laughs> like they, they just they like you. You're not gonna you're gonna bore people because mm. you're so excited about something they didn't experience. So maybe there's like a like a defensive detachment of like I wasn't there. I I would want to go myself. Mm. But I mean, one out of ten people might be really curious, you know. And then yeah. the way you talk about it, you know, get, jumping on a plane and then seeing like another part of the world, it's it's almost just as magical. Yeah. 
Absolutely. as it's all, just as ridiculous to like take a to eat some mushrooms and then to like you know meet God or whatever the the meme is. But that's why I use the term psychedelic as like a verb. Whether I don't know if it's a verb or not, but like like that's an exci- like that's so psychedelic. Could be just traveling, like you said, going to a different country. That's a psychedelic experience. Yeah, you know, or just like so like so many things can be in that category and when i say that's psychedelic i mean it's like it puts you in that kind of space of like what you thought you knew is being up for question yeah you know and it like yeah you're you're questioning the moment you're Mm -hmm. questioning your your feet on the ground like you're really and it can be fun it can be scary it's a those things often go hand in hand right all right let's talk about that time i went 2d let's hear about it so uh I'll kind of direct your story if I need to, or uh, like emphasize on some questions or whatever, but please, I give you this moment to have the spotlight on to you. It's funny because the spotlight's more on me, but it's hot in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing my, my coat, yeah, but you, you do, you, uh, do you want to know a backstory a little bit or to just kind of dive into it? It may be a little bit of a backstory in, in just set and setting kind yeah, of thing. So yeah. So like why you decided to do this, I don't know what we're going to be talking about, so you'll get into it, but maybe just like the intention or the reasoning behind getting into that experience Mm. and just a little bit of who Sammy is before and then I guess the trip and then yeah who am I is actually I'm not going to touch that one my name's Sammy that's a whole podcast go on Curious (laughs) Gyms you'll learn more about me than I could say right now um but I'm a guy I uh you know what like uh, people define themselves by their jobs often like I don't really know how to you know Mm. but I've taken a lot of psychedelics uh, I've definitely dabbled with uh, mushrooms, uh, something I thought was LSD. I don't think it was. Uh, we did the ceremony once, and that, that's in itself a psychedelic, but, but you're being facilitated with, the, with ayahuasca, mm-hmm. and which, which I think you, th- you need to. But right. I mean, and, and what I'm going to talk about today, salvia, which uh, was legal for a while, which is, which is just lovely. And mm-hmm. you could just go to a head shop and buy like a vial, and uh, and it was it's a it's a it's actually a form of sage. Yeah, and it's and a cousin. No, it's yeah, it's yeah. A, it's one of it's like I don't know the the genus or whatever the word is. You know, it's like a type of sage, and I love that because sage means like wisdom, right? So it's it's obviously there's a connection there. I, d- I don't know the actual etymology, but um, this stuff is potent as hell. This stuff is crazy, and the what I love is that when you used to buy it, it would just had this like <laughs> X. This, yeah, it had this sticker on the vial twenty, and it just had like a times five, times <laughs> ten, times twenty, and it's essentially like um I forgot what it's called where they they use the plant, but they use other plant to make it more concentrated to like mm. distill. So you still have salvia, but then you have like you, they used like the juice of other salvia like to make it stronger. There's a word for it. I don't remember. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so that's me a little bit, and I am definitely interested in drugs, and that's kind of why we started Curious Chimps, actually. And, and obviously, this is a, a natural progression. This podcast mm. is a beautiful uh, project that I'm glad to be finally uh, adding my my story to. Hell yeah! So the set and setting for this uh, story was me and four dudes living in an apartment. And um, we had a fourth person that was just kind of fluctuating sometimes because people would would move in and out kind of thing. So the, you know, like uh, Matthew's room turned into the drug room. (laughs) And we would uh, go on the balcony and smoke weed, cigarettes, whatever the fuck. And there was just a mattress left over from one of the, the old roommates. So I read a lot about Salvia and, you know, like the the similar things that that uh influenced you uh you mm-hmm. know these cool websites these trip reports a lot of crazy things were coming out of salvia and it was a very interesting drug mm. uh, and i'll get into why uh later but part of it is that it has a reverse tolerance so you have a crazy experience the first time and then as it goes as you take more in the same day you won't feel it but if you take it the next day and the next day it actually gets stronger it's an interesting point I didn't know that. It's insane. I don't understand how that works. You, hmm. it's, it has a reverse tolerance. But it's it's kind of like having some phasic thing in your body. Like, the same thing happens with weed. Anyway, I'm, I'm not a scientist. so <laughs> You read it somewhere. <clears throat> Probably on Reddit, uh, <laughs> funny enough. But, um, yeah, so this place, I felt comfortable enough, but I was pretty young, too, you know, so I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, obviously. And uh, I had not really taken salvia this way before and what i mean is that like i'd be i don't know in a car with a friend you mm-hmm. know and like not driving obviously because we're not s- s- insane <laughs> but like you can't see you when you're on salvia like you go away yeah i think that's i remember now why i started 
because I, friends were telling me their stories and it's like you this, like my friend just vanished and mm -hmm. he was like you know he's like he's like suddenly you're like you're holding a blue orb of light in your hand and then it turns into a knife you know and like he's telling me all these crazy things and he's telling me about his other friend who was just talking gibberish and then it only lasts like 10 minutes and they're back and it's like so it feels safe it See, feels that was quick. the appealing part of salvia yeah that, that quick as it as it comes it goes quick and it leaves as it goes quick and i mean it's fun to feel uh uh the paranoia or the nervousness of taking a drug uh, back then when it was still legal you know, the, like that added layer that people talk about, about paranoia of, mm. of, some, of taking something that you shouldn't be taking, like by the standards of society that you could be jailed for or fined or I don't know what the fuck. So this was, this had that, like there was less of that, but it was such an intimidating experience. And I had taken it before, I had mixed it in with weed. I didn't know what I was doing. You have to torch this stuff. You have to really light it up. Mm -hmm. And... um you have to inhale while you're lighting it up. Like it's not the healthiest thing. It mm. tastes like you're smoke. It's like you're inhaling f like a smoking fish. Mm. Like it's terrible. I hate the taste. I think everybody does. And that you have to hold it for a long time. It's kind of similar to DMT. Like if you have the crystals or something, but it's it's a miserable experience. And then as a lot of drugs can kind of usher you into like a new world, this thing like vibrates you int and until you pop into another dimension. It's violent. I literally said those words. My friend Max was right next to me and I, don't, I guess he was thinking about trying it and I just turned to him and I, because I was holding my breath for so long after I took the puff, um, I, I, my heart was racing, really racing, 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 racing. And I started feeling the high and it feels like ants were all over my body. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't seeing ants or anything, but it just felt, I felt this tingle. Like when you sit on your, like your arm or something, like your, your, your mm -hmm. leg, like you get the tingle. Like it like falls the, asleep. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Like my whole body was like that. But my heartbeat, I felt it like a shock throughout my whole body as well. And my visual space started to get static as if the, the ants were like the vibration was so violent. It's like the blood in my head was shaking. Like it was really like mm. and it just got worse and worse until I, it's like, oh, my God, what's happening? And um, they almost feel like uh, gears. Gears, you know, when the gears are like turning and turning and turning. Oh, it's like like I get a lot of that visual mm. in, uh, in when I took other salvia okay. trips. There, I had some little stuff like that here and there where you can almost see moments passing by mm -hmm. and, and crazy smiles and things in between, like these creatures <laughs> that are controlling the fabric of reality or something. Yeah, and yeah. they look at you like, like, hey, it's you again. <laughs> you know, they're happy to see you, That's but the surprised. Odd part is the familiarity of the, that Famili familiar a, familiarity. Yeah, of that experience sometimes is just like that's weird. And and I I I used to say I likened it to like, um, like imagine you're a scientist and there's a rat in a cage, and the 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 rat suddenly looks up at you, and then like kind of follows you, and like if you were a scientist, you'd be like, what the fuck. <laughs> You know, and he's, he's just suddenly like smarter than he should be mm. or something, you know, and then, and you're like, well, look at you. What the fuck are you doing? Like, get to stop that. That's crazy. <laughs> like you're, you're a little surprised. You're a little what the hell, but he's not a threat. Yeah. He's just now he's, he's seeing a bit of your world or something. That's the look they were giving me. Wow. I was the rat. Yeah. You know, but these are other trips, you know, like I'm just, I'm okay. just I, I know what you mean by the gears sort mm. of these weird, but what I was feeling in that moment, that heartbeat was so like Oh, like all encompassing of my experience, uh, like uh, that and the vibrating tinglys, you know, like my like everything was shaking. Shaking is the only word I can really come up with, just violently shaking. Mm. And I had started this became a bit visual, but it's like the wall was just white in front of me. And I'm on this, uh, you know, this mattress I told you about. And it seemed like the wall was just coming down on me. And that's and it's like it was slapping me like some kind of film. You know, mm. it, it didn't hurt, but it hurt. It stung a little. And that was my heartbeat. Pow. Pow, all over my body, pow. But I could see like the wall just going pow, mm. pow, pow. And I was like, uh, 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 uh. like you can't breathe, you know? Like yeah. you're just, uh. and this, like I said, just ramped up, just ramped up until like, like, like imagine like tapping, like that just becomes and just goes, yeah. you know, it just becomes like uh, this one singular note sort of. But uh, I was gone. Hmm. I was just gone at that point. And I can't say there was much of a transition other than that vibration. And it was very overwhelming. It was very, I literally, like I said, I turned to my friend Max. I said, this is violent <laughs> with like a big smile on my face. And then as you do sometimes, I just went away. And uh, my, my, I had another friend, he went after me. He was just smiling the whole time. <laughs> he was like looking at you and then looking through you. But he just had this big, gorgeous grin, you know. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing, but I was gone. And... 
I'm suddenly like I meant it like a like if anyone is familiar with uh, Flatland, the book or the Carl Sagan like thing like the the video the meme. Uh, or the movie actually is great. The mm -hmm. movie's fantastic. It's a really fun time. It's good for kids too. Really mm -hmm. expands your mind about dimensions. But um, but Flatland for the listeners is just the the whole. Th I don't know the the movie premise, but I'm sure it's similar to what Carl Sagan was doing. But he was just illustrating each dimension so we could kind of understand. And Flatland, I think, was the second dimension where they had length and width, but no height. Exactly. Yeah. So the first dimension is just length, or is it? I no, guess, there there would. One one dimension would essentially be a dot, just a dot. So yeah. it's a it's a it's a point in mm -hmm. space, but there's no dimension. There's yeah. no up or left or anything, right? So that is hard to conceive on its own. But you know, we're talking kind of mathematics. And the point of Flatland was to conceptualize the fourth dimension, if you could, you know, because I mean, Google it. But you can you can like essentially, uh, let's say like a square. It has like four right angles and then it's a closed shape that's how you define a square and then a cube has right angles still but in 3d so you have mm -hmm. all still right angles but you have six sides now uh in the fourth dimension mm -hmm. we can't visualize this easily or at all maybe some people can but they can it still has it has more faces mm -hmm. but it still only has 90 degree angles yeah so it's almost like there's space compressed in it. And then you could almost imagine like there's more space in the cube than out of the cube. It's very complicated, which is why you need these analogies. So long story short, Flatland is this 2D world. And then you imagine a 3D god almost coming in and intruding on the world. And these creatures in the Flatland, they, they have a life, they have a mind, they, they, but they can't see up or down. Uh, everything they see is its line segments. It's forward, backwards, sideways, but no up or down. Exactly. And yeah. in the movie, it's hilarious because the women are all triangles and they, they have to scream when they travel because people have to get out of their way because the triangle will like bifurcate you. Like, it'll just kill you. <laughs> it's interesting. So, yeah, it's yeah. really funny. So um, it's hard. It's very hard to describe my experience, but I need to reference Flatland mm -hmm. because I was I was missing a dimension. Just to, to break that up a little second is that Please. the psychedelic experience for the most part is described through analogies and imagery and you can't bring it back with you you can't bring it back and there's such limited language but you'll hear in most people's experiences or like profound powerful deep uh like you'll hear these kind of words coming over and over again because you really are experiencing something that we would describe as godly in some of these experiences that are so out of the earth so out of our common language and there's nothing better but analogies to describe these kind of experiences because we don't have words for them and, and this experience actually taught me that in in a lot of ways like the only ground you have in these experiences is emotion mm. i feel like that's the universal thing you like you can not be you anymore or you can still kind of have a sense of self or you can have n zero sense of self you know like this is like i'm sure you know what i'm talking about yeah. but there maybe you just consolidate it when you come back but like a dream you know but you you definitely still feel fear love all these things are are so there they're so present amplified even uh, yeah mm -hmm. you know maybe simplified in a lot of ways you know like there's a lot of fluff and a lot of mm. uh extra definitions and things and, and all these divisions that we, we put for specificity's sake but um you know whether this is some real place i went or some fabrication in my mind is irrelevant because it was extremely real and uh, dreamlike in the sense that I had a whole life. That's the interesting thing to me is that, so I was some flatland guy. I was some kind of oval, Some I, looked, I felt like I was a cell. Is this before you saw the movie Flatland or you've already had this? Concept? I had this okay. as reference and okay. I think it helped me to understand it okay. and, or even maybe influenced it a lot. Mm -hmm. And But this was, I, I literally was like a microscopic. Like I looked like a cell. And it was very dreamlike as well in the sense that I was experiencing it, but I like my memory was like of watching it happen almost. It was it was very surreal. Mm -hmm. I, and again, you know, you you ju you're just explained how I will have a hard time explaining. This. <laughs> and um, I was extremely distraught in this world. Like I had, like I said, I had a whole life which I was in the process of forgetting because I was being chased by what was essentially like police, but in some kind of way where I had done nothing wrong. And I was just being like, uh, uh, like oppressed hmm. for my thoughts, you know, like this real, you know, a real narrative, a real fucking narrative. And I was there with a girl 
or some kind of equivalent of like this love interest, like this person that I, I had to protect her. Hmm. I was, I was, I had put her in danger because of like what I thought was important. It's all kind of archetypal. I, I, I even, even fresh in the moment, I couldn't really tell you. But uh, I was being chased, you know, and I, and it was very scary. And it it felt like it lasted so long. It was crazy. And I was just going. I was running away. And th this whole, like, you know, we talked about Flatland. Navigating this world had all these different rules. There was no smell. There, were, there was no light. Uh, my senses were based on what was around me. It was based on, like, uh, things that, like, things em em uh, emitted kind of like smell, I guess. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's all touch in the end, right? even light hitting your eye, you know, it's touch in the end. So there was something, there was a way I was aware of my surroundings, but there was all this subtext, hmm. you know, there was all this depth of emotion, you know, uh, and like, like it was just real, man. It was really real. And I feel it talking about it. It's kind of crazy because it's, um, it's, it's anxiety, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, like, uh, anyone who has a bit of, you know, anxious, uh, mentality or, or maybe is disordered in some way when you when you see cops or something or when you want to speak yeah. up for yourself when you want to challenge authority you know that you're not just challenging authority it's like you're trying to present an idea and remove your ego but you know you're going to be blamed you're the messenger and you know that you are not fighting the authority directly but the ideas because other people will gang up on you because they they agree with the authority hmm. and that's essentially what these people were chasing me for you know, like they had power in this world and so do the cops. That's why I call them cops. Okay. Cops do what they got to do, man. But the, the reality, part of the reality is that they have handcuffs and guns and a badge and they can kind of do things that humans shouldn't be able to do. But and, but in the moment, you don't know that. that oh, sorry, in the moment, you don't know that it's temporary. You really are just in it. It's, 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 as, it's like it's always been. Hmm. It's like it's always been and I would go so far as... You just pop into the storyline... Yeah. Without the concept of knowing Sammy's on the other side. Sammy was gone. Sammy was 100% gone. gone. So you're completely immersed in this world. Yeah. And it is your reality. Yeah. And it's like, it's it started in the middle kind of thing. I really just, uh, it's like that poem of the guy who dreamt of being a butterfly. And then he's like, the butterfly didn't know about me. And then I woke up and I was me again. And it's like, is the butterfly dreaming me or am I dreaming the butterfly? Mm. Who the fuck knows? That loop. Yeah. You know, but like... That's what that's what's intimidating as well is that in that moment so much life was there and so much like memory and so much like just being that had nothing at all to do with my Sammy life that it that's that's like that shattered my <laughs> like when I when I was coming out of it which mm. I I'll I'll get to that but I I I was like I was changed I was giggly I was like oh my god I smoked a plant and I went away. Like that sentence shouldn't be real. Yeah. But um <laughs> yeah. So I mean the trip itself was just very much emotional and it very dreamlike in that sense. So I don't know how much more I can add, but I was I was like hiding from them and they would pass by kind of thing. Wow. And then the girl would be freaking out. I call her a girl, but like we were amoebas or something. I don't know. <laughs> and I really think it was like the cellular life in a way. Maybe I was some kind of virus, you know, and some I was white blood cells are searching for you. Yeah, you know, like there was they were just doing their job and they they it, you know humans do this too. Like w there's a bit of a mindlessness when we come to a sense of duty. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing sometimes because then you don't falter. Mm -hmm. You know, you fall to your training and and people who are well trained, unfortunately sometimes they might do things a little blindly. Fortunately/unfortunately. slash unfortunately. So I was this, you know, fucking problematic thing you know i didn't feel like some rebel i didn't feel like this wasn't a fun moment this wasn't a cool story I, I, like i was really gonna die you know and uh, and she was gonna die too maybe uh, probably actually but she was just there because of me and i felt terrible but i was in a panic there were these extra emotional like these extra human emotions you know like they they it was all it was all very human actually i don't mm. know but it's just in this other experience this other modality of experience where I couldn't, I wasn't breathing, you know? Like I noticed these things later, like I wasn't in a human body. Mm -hmm. Not only, like I don't remember me, you know, but like I, anyway, I could talk oh. for a while. <laughs> but I, there was this place I had to get to, like a kind of haven. I had to kind of cross onto mm -hmm. a thing and then I could get to this sort of transportation and then I could lose them in a sense. Mm -hmm. But I, would, I knew I would never be safe again. 
and and there there was so much like I aged, man. Like that was a fucking stressful experience. It was a crazy experience to to things I I probably will never go through in my life. Mm-hmm. And maybe nowadays I don't know, but yeah. but you know, no one's on the chopping block like that that I know of, and I definitely am not in this world. So so that was really eye opening emotionally to go into some depths and and that I almost didn't even really register in my body. It was mm-hmm. all kind of cerebral. And then upon kind of coming back, because this just really lasts like f- 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe, um, I wasn't all the way back. That's the crazy part, is I was, and this is part of why I call it like 2D or Flatland, is because I was able to like, it's like, the, imagine looking at a piece of paper at an edge. You know, you turn it until you almost don't see it again. So it's like I, I was looking at that world and then it just kind of vanished into this infinite line of 2D planes mm-hmm. that, that were literally in front of me, like making the 3D world. And then, and, uh, you know, make of it what you will. I can speculate, but that's what I was experiencing. And I was so happy to be back mm. at, because I kept getting sucked into that world and it was very, very stressful. And then I'd be back and I'd, and I'd be so happy to be a monkey <laughs> on a planet. I was opening and closing doors <laughs> and I just had a big shit eating grin on my face. And my friends had no idea what I had just w- gone through, you know, yeah. and was still going through. That was part of the crazy. Even now, just talking about it, too. It's like it's like that's still going on. Yeah. And that's another Sammy in a way. Like there's a connection there. I wasn't just watching a movie like I was living this guy. And maybe it's literally just like a cell in my body that I had access to that was like, <laughs> you're dead now because you're, yeah. you're like some virus or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. But it, it was it was n- crazy. And then the craziest part is I, when I was really half in and half out, um, other worlds were opening. Like these other, these lines would open and I, and I would kind of like, like my mind's eye would kind of like choose another page mm. because I was kind of me again. And I didn't know what I was doing or how I could. It was hard to control, but it was like there were entire other lives, entire other stories, with similar modalities. It was all this kind of two D, like the like the 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 Z axis of it all. You know, like it was gone. Mm. There was it was for some reason it was all flat, uh, and I I don't know why, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, what <laughs> happened. That's it was I I remember looking my friend was on the couch and he was wearing a beanie and he was looking at me smiling hmm. and I was like what is he smiling about and I realized I was smiling <laughs> so he was just looking at me like what are you smiling just about so <laughs> thankful to be back <laughs> yeah man but like you're I got out of that and I was like you feel dreamy hmm. like not like the texture of the experience can be can be very like wistful and dreamy in some ways but then I felt like I was like am I awake right now and I don't know if that was the drug or the just the effect of like being like, you know, obliterated and mm-hmm. then just kind of reassembled like like a transporter in Star Trek. Like just yeah. bloop, you're here now. Yeah. <laughs> and the familiarity was like untrustworthy almost. Mm. My certainty was just gone in general. Because I had just lived this other, I had just been dropped. Like it's like my consciousness just went. You're this guy now. You've always been this guy. Fuck you. Fuck Sammy. There is no Sammy. Yeah. Who's Sammy? And uh, you know. And then it's 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 a trip up, man. It's not just a trip. It's a trip up. Well, that's the power of these experiences, whether they're positive or negative. I'm sweating, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Subjectively positive or negative, is they can create that space of uncertainty. And that's why I emphasize on like the power of um, the power of set and setting is because. Hey, that's my friend calling me. The guy who was wearing the beanie. There you go. That's some wild stuff right there. That's crazy. <laughs> but that, that's the that's the thing is if you're not in a supportive environment that that could be quite traumatic for your whole life. So it's good that you had your friends around, but imagine yeah. that that experience in a very bad environment and how negative that could have turned. I think, uh, I mean, I was young and, and I was still kind of like, there's a lot of suppression just in, in my regular life back then of just like being embarrassed and not knowing mm. how to be and stuff. But like, you know, you forget yourself, especially when you're high, especially when you're so grateful just to be alive. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I don't know. I, you know, it obviously still affects me now, mm-hmm. which is interesting. You like to have a, a, a bodily reaction to just telling a story. Mm. That doesn't happen to me often. Um, but, I don't know if it was so I think it's easy to put it aside as well, you know, like the like the emotions were so intense 
but I don't know. I, maybe it's a defense mechanism, but I just like it. it it's so not me. It's so alien. Mm. And 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 like the meta experience, the fact that I forgot Sammy and just was this cell or whatever you want to call it. Like that's kind of the most fascinating part is just that whole butterfly thing. Like what is real? Like that's yeah. that's what I feel like I pulled from it or it kind of it pushed into me like through the nose. Fuck. Mm. But like it, it really pushed in like, dude, life is bullshit. <laughs> you know, I'd taken psychedelics before, but it, like nothing like that. Mm. And then, and it's like, it really, it didn't put anything into perspective. I mean, it did later, I guess, to, to take things less seriously maybe, or to kind of try, want to try other psychedelics. I don't know, but it, it was like, I had just lost uh, some certainty and <laughs> for better or worse, like you said, you yeah. know, like I think it was just, it was so eye opening. Yeah, in ways that I don't even I don't I don't even know. Like I can't say like oh I learned this I learned that I was sometimes better this you don't way. need to though. Some, no, for so, sure. Sometimes it's just like a skydiving experience, just so out of the ordinary, wild. That's a great analogy. <laughs> that's a great comparison because that's what. Why do you do that? Yeah, it's just fun. Yeah. Well, salvia, I always found it to be more like the skydiving of psychedelics, where scary. You might not <clears throat> get these profound lessons, but you're gonna have a wild trip that you will not be able to explain properly. Yeah, you're, you're gonna be wide-eyed afterwards. Sometimes there's some tidbits of nuggets of information that come out of it. And sometimes it's just like I just live this life of running from white blood cells, and and now I'm back in my body. And what the fuck do I do with that information? <laughs> it's uh, just the fact that you can experience that. I find it so incredible. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know that's a, like like we said at the beginning like it's like fuck video games <laughs> smoke this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what i mean i mean maybe maybe that's you know with caution of course with caution, yeah we always say but like it's if if you're here and you want li- to like get some juice out of life mm. it's almost like a life hack to just like pop some mushrooms or something and like i i like about a year ago i did like the five dried grams in a dark room kind of mm. thing i have the luxury now because i live alone like bruh yeah that'll, that'll do it like wh- talk about a washing machine but like you're just so you're like even if it's the most miserable experience hopefully you're not like traumatized or you need to like really process it like you said which could happen obviously but um it's you're just so grateful to be back that's a big factor in all of my experiences is that gratitude of coming back into this existence as, as this person in all my trips is always the best moment because it's like oh it's done. I, oh, I'm here. Oh, it feels so good. Let's eat. Let's yeah. enjoy the fruits of this world. Literally. Yeah. But yeah. And you just feel great. It's and that's, if that alone is what you take out of it, there's a lot of value in that. I don't, I, I it, it's, it gets a, it gets up my ass a little. I don't know. I don't want to be like scared into gratitude, but I guess if you need to, then it's cause you need to, right? Like mm. there's something stubborn about like, I don't know if it's scared, but it's more that you take this existence for granted at times. Yeah, and so that so you won't notice the things to be grateful for, and then you will notice the the fear. And mm-hmm. I, I I liken it to like um, imagine like your your parents have, like your parents have like a expensive vase or a vase if you're nasty, <laughs> and <laughs> and you you drop it. Mm-hmm. You know they're not, they're you're playing, uh, f- you know with a ball or something. They told you not to. They're not home. They're gonna be back soon. You nudge the fucking pillar. Or, you know like just like in yeah. the movies, the thing breaks. And you're having a bad trip now, man. You're fucking, you're stressed. You're in it. And, and then the alarm, the, the, the clock goes boop, 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 bing, bong, whatever. Yeah. And then you know they're going to be home any minute. That's the feeling. But then they open the door and you turn and the vase is fine. Mm. That's the feeling. Yeah. You're like, God, oh my God. I'm so <laughs> happy to be, the vase isn't broken. You're like giving you, them a big hug. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, just, doing, you're being extra nice to them. Yeah, because a second ago, your life was over. I think they were going to be so mad at you and you're a kid, right? You think they're going to eat you or kill you or, yeah. or kick you out of the, the tribe or whatever your, your kid fear is, you know? And then you're like, oh God, like I'm so sorry, <laughs> grateful. I don't know, you know, yeah. like all these, all the nature comes out and all the, it's, yeah. it's intense. And then it's so relieving that you cannot help but be like, Whoo. <laughs> that's and the I, same thing people get when they do crazy endurance things or any type of physical or demanding thing Jesus where they <laughs> where where they <laughs> I was so scared where someone overcomes like a who does like a ultra marathon or just even a marathon or just even like a 5k and then they overcome it and then they have this vantage point of gratitude of it's done I feel good and there's a lot of we do all these kind of things for that moment it might take 30 seconds or 30 minutes but yeah. when you like collapse 
It's the best feeling in the yeah, world. Yeah, you're just there, and you're just in full presence. I did it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> and that's, you can get that, that from psychedelic experience sometimes. It's just, it could be one of the hardest things to do in the sense of pulling that courage of doing it. And then the after is usually, for the most part, very rewarding because you just did something that's extremely terrifying, like stepping into the unknown. So that it's the benefit is in the experience, but the benefit is also coming back into this world, knowing that you had the courage to go in. You know, I I think I I don't feel that because I feel like it's it's like it's like taking a plane tr- a plane ride. Mm-hmm. You know, I just kind of I just kind of almost ignore the gravity of the situation and then when the plane takes off i can't be nervous it's done it's done you know so it's like once you eat the thing or smoke it's, the well thing that's done yeah. you're like okay the ride's coming but but man you're you, whether you f- pretend or not you are scared yeah and i think that maybe just after today you know or like in general i'm going to try to realize that it can be easy to just pop a thing in your in your mouth you know like drugs are are maybe just a stepping stone to facing fear Especially that the trip is like you don't know what you're gonna get, mm-hmm. even if you've been there before. But man, it's it takes balls. It, it takes does. bravery. It, it does. really does. And you know, it might not be the hardest thing in the world, obviously, but it's still fucking scary. Mm-hmm. And you leap, man, just like the airplane, just like a, a skydiving. And I've gone skydiving. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that shit again. Mm. But it was horrifying. And I was proud of myself. And and I had a big fucking smile at the end. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's a great way to end it, too. Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> hey, man, thanks. This was really fun. Thank you, brother. Thanks for coming on. And let's keep these stories going. And we got the cameras going. And I appreciate you all for listening. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes. Uh, thanks again, Sammy, for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right. Peace and love. Oh.